Okay, it's 6.30. It's time to bring this Murray City Council meeting to order. Uh, will you please silence your cell phones? The council may, meeting may be live, view live on the internet at http slash murraycitylive.com. Okay, we'll have the opening ceremonies, the Pledge of Allegiance, and I've asked Weston if he would please come and lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have no approval of the minutes scheduled. Uh, we're going to have a special recognition, 5.3. Murray Employee of the Month, Paula Bassett, Murray City Municipal Court, Brett Hales, and Michelle Williams. Michael Williams. Paula, we'll have Paula come up also. Come on over here. I know this is something you asked for. I know. <laughs> well, I deserve no, it. it so. Oh, well, I love it. You're the first person that's finally had enough guts <laughs> to play along with me. I love it. That is awesome. <laughs> the courts. I love yes. it. Anyway, we're excited to have you here, Paula. Um, Paula, how long have you worked for the courts? For three, three years. So three years. And um, we started this program about five years ago, and it's for um, the uh, citizen or uh, employee of the month. And uh, it's been a great program. We've been able to recognize tons and tons of employees that have done a great job for our great city. So here we have uh, a certificate for you. And then we have, more important thing, a $50 gift card nice. for you. you. And don't let Mike tell you he's supposed to split it with you. You're okay. supposed to split it with him. But anyway, we appreciate all that you do for the city. Yeah. Thank you so much. And then Mike's going to go ahead and say some more. But from, from the council, we really appreciate you. Thank really. you. Well, I appreciate that we have the opportunity to recognize the employees. Paula, like she says, has been with me for three years at the court, and she does the front counter, so she's the first person that you would actually see when you come in on the lower level. And she actually, with a dry wit of humor, she actually is very good at what she, at what she does, and I think it, it's probably one of the better, the 15, 16 years I've been here, probably one of the better front desk people that I've had up there. Um, she does, she, she answers the phones, but mainly people come in, she takes the fine payments, she helps them with the court dates, everything but legal advice. Um, she, and one of the main things she does too is expungements, and you probably don't know anything about those, that's when people want to get their record erased. And it, it is a nightmare to try to get this through and the paperwork, and it's one of those things that every legislature changes, and it's always a secret the way they change it until you try to do it, and you have to try to catch up with it. So she does a very fine job, and I'm glad we were able to do this. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. I just want to say thanks, and I'm happy to work for Murray City, and I'll be around a while, so you'll see me in a few years getting another employee of the month. Don't you worry about it. And thank you. Thank you, Paula. Anything from the council? Okay, 5.32, uh, Mayor Blair Camp, 2018, State of the City Address. Thank you, Dale. It's a full house. Well, good evening. Good evening, me members of the City Council, the public, our residents, uh, department heads, city staff, uh, scouts, great to have you here tonight. And uh, I want to first acknowledge this evening the immense amount of time that uh, the city council uh, puts in uh, to serve in our behalf. So city council, I want to extend appreciation and thank you to each one of you for, for all your efforts and the time you put in. I'm pleased uh, this evening to present my first State of the City Address. 
Let me begin by saying that the state of Murray City is strong and sound, but not without challenges. I'll mention some of these challenges throughout this address. First, I want to acknowledge this evening the loss of two prominent and influential individuals in Murray City this past year. Mayor Ted Iyer passed away on August 25th after a courageous battle with cancer. Mayor Iyer, <clears throat> mayor Iyer loved this city and loved serving as mayor, and we miss him. Former Mayor Lynn Pett passed away on September 17th after a long battle with pulmonary fibrosis. Lynn's powerful influence on Murray City can never be overstated. From his love for the Boys and Girls Club of Murray, which he was instrumental in developing, to the city parks, the Jordan River Parkway, and of course, the golf course that bears his name, I salute both of these great men this evening. We miss them both. We were also saddened uh, by the death of our former chief building official, Gilbert Gonzalez, in, in August, who um, also fought a valiant battle with cancer. Tonight, I wish to acknowledge my newly assembled team in the mayor's office. Longtime public services director, Doug Hill, is now serving as chief administrative officer. Jennifer Heaps as Communications and Public Relations Director, and Tracy Walker as Administrative Assistant. These are all outstanding and competent individuals, and I'm happy to have them on my team. Tonight, I express my gratitude for the opportunity that I have to serve as Mayor and Chief Executive Officer of this great city. In many ways, Murray City is the envy of other municipalities. Murray City has a unique sense of community, a, di a direct result of many, many individuals and families who, without fanfare, devote their time and energy to our community schools, recreation and sports programs, art programs, boys and girls club, and other worthwhile causes, not to mention quiet service to their friends and neighbors. I recognize and express appreciation this evening to the dozens of Murray residents who voluntarily serve on one of our 11 boards and commissions. We are all the benefactors of their hundreds of hours of volunteer service each year. The American short story writer, Cynthia Ozak, is credited with saying, we often take for granted the very things that most deserve our gratitude. I'll take the liberty of tweaking that quote just a little by saying we often take for granted the very people who most deserve our gratitude. Thank you all for your dedicated service. Tonight I also acknowledge the retirement last summer of Bob Dunn. And Bob is here this evening. He's standing out in the hall. Uh, after more than three decades of full-time service to the Murray Boys and Girls Club. And it's just like Bob to be in the background. That's where he likes to be. Of course, Bob hasn't really retired, but continues to serve as a part-time volunteer Bob has also accepted the invitation to serve on the Murray City Personnel Advisory Board. And I salute Bob this evening. And Bob, thank you for your many years of selfless service. <laughs> Speaking of serving the youth of our community, I want to recognize another important organization that has grown from the Boys and Girls Club roots, Kids Eat, and its remarkable founder, Linda Brown. Linda, a Murray resident for over 45 years, has been a volunteer at the Murray Boys and Girls Club for more than 25 years. When Linda realized that many of the kids at the club did not have food to eat on the weekends when they were not at the club, she did something about it. She created Kids Eat, a nonprofit foundation that provides backpacks filled with food for the children to take home on the weekends. In 2015, Kids Eat fed some 50 children a week. In less than three short years, Linda's foundation has grown to serve the entire Salt Lake County and beyond, providing approximately 2,500 meals and snacks each week for at-risk children. Last September, Linda was awarded the Maytag Dependable Leader Award, one of only 10 awarded in the entire nation. That award came with a $20,000 check from Maytag 
to provide college scholarships to members of the Boys and Girls Club. I salute Linda this evening and thank her for her many years of generous service. And I don't believe Linda could be here tonight. She is, she's ill, yeah. I also express appreciation this evening to my exceptional department and division directors. Uh, we'll provide the City Council a copy of our 2017 uh, year-end summary report, but I wish to highlight just a few things uh, f this evening from that report. First of all, the City Attorney's Office is involved in nearly e every aspect of our city and provides legal advice and guidance to all departments and to the City Council. Our, our Attorney's Office is also responsible for prosecuting cases in the Justice Court. The city is a complex corporation with many legal issues, and I have great confidence in our legal team and completely trust our new city attorney, G.L. Critchfield. I also wish to acknowledge tonight our award-winning finance department under the leadership of Denise Steck. The council has received an overview and a copy of the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or CAFR, prepared by the finance department. And uh, the CAFR is also available on the website for uh, review from the, for public review. This detailed report demonstrates the competency and proficiency of our financial team. Their work has also resulted in a recent upgrade in the city's bond credit rating from AA- minus to AA, which will save the city money on future bond payments. Our Human Resources Department, under the direction of Mike Terry, provides support for the city's 391 full-time employees and 533 part-time and seasonal employees. In 2017, 41 full-time employees resigned or retired from the city, and 40 new full-time employees were hired. The Parks and Recreation Department is headed by Kim Sorensen. In Murray City, our parks, recreation, and arts programs continue to be very popular and successful. Swim Lessons was our biggest youth program with approximately 3,600 participants. The recreation staff offered 62 recreation programs in 2017. Daily admissions to the outdoor swimming pool totaled nearly 39,000 patrons. The new pickleball courts were open for use in October, and although though they're not quite finished, we're very close to a resolution with the contractor's bonding company to finish the last details, including the lighting. But they are still getting a lot of use. The Murray Park Amphitheater remodel was completed and hosted a grand opening in August. Although delayed by a near catastrophic construction accident, the finished product is magnificent and will host arts events for many years to come. We appreciate the Murray School District for assisting with hosting of five Arts in the Park productions that otherwise may have been canceled due to the amphitheater construction delay. A public art piece was installed in front of the amphitheater in October with 71 private donors providing the complete funding of $15,000. Our parks continue to be heavily used by the public, but there are a number of capital projects that we will once again be discussing, discussing not necessarily disgusting, dis discussing during the upcoming budget process. I will also be asking the council to fund a new Murray City Parks and Recreation Master Plan uh, in the upcoming budget to replace our current outdated plan, which was completed in 1994. One of the very popular treasures of the Parks and Recreation Department is our Heritage Center. I always enjoy the opportunities that I have to visit the center. Just last week, Council, Mem council Member Dale Cox and I had the opportunity an experience of leading the YMCA song to the lunchtime crowd. I'm grateful that there was no video, at least that I, that I know of. It was posted. <laughs> the Heritage Center provides so many programs for our seniors, from cooking to painting to recreation programs to bingo and so on and so on. There were nearly 11,000 meals served at the Heritage Center in 2017. Over 100 volunteers assist in providing programs and services. Those who visit the center love the great staff and enjoy being part of the activities there. There's truly something for everyone there. 
Our power department, under the leadership of General Manager Blaine Hackey, continues to do an outstanding job of providing reliable and reasonably priced power to approximately two-thirds of our city's geographical area. The power department is currently out of debt and is implementing plans to upgrade the 4800 South substation, which is built on the old Murray City landfill and has some settling issues that needs to be resolved. It's important to note that all residents of Murray benefit from the city-owned utility, even those who are not receiving electricity from Murray Power. The Power Department pays an annual dividend to the city general fund, provides trimming of all street trees, and subsidizes street lighting in the entire city, all that benefit all residents. I'm proud that our Power Department management team is environmentally conscious as well. Approximately 40% of our power portfolio is from renewable resources, and we are continually looking at, at and planning for additional green uh, generation, such as large-scale uh, large solar, not polar, large-scale solar. The Public Works Department, under the direction of Danny Astle, has completed its water master plan and has been working to complete the first phase of our well sustainability and capacity study. The rate study is complete and reflects a number of capital improvements needed, including replacement of two wells, replacement of deficient pipes, addition of backup power to two wells, and other necessary improvements. The study also addressed the legislature imposed requirement for a tiered rate to encourage conservation through higher rates for large water users. The new rates were presented and discussed at the Committee of the Whole meeting on January 16th and as you know, are still pending final action by the City Council. Public Works has completed a long list of road projects and maintenance projects this past year, from general maintenance to crack seals, overlays, and complete rebuilds. Funding for road maintenance, repair, and replacement continues to be a difficult challenge. Each year, the long list of projects exceeds the available funding. Our Public Works Department stretches our road maintenance funds each year to cover as many projects as possible, and they do a, a really great job. Also, this recent snowstorm serves as a reminder of the outstanding job by our city personnel in responding to snow removal on our public streets. I appreciate their dedication and amazing response. Uh, when I got up yesterday morning and looked out the window, my uh, street had already been plowed, and uh, that happened before I was mayor, too. So. The Administrative and Development Services Department, under, under the direction of, of awesome Tim Tingey, <laughs> provides a wide range of services. In 2017, there were 445 new commercial business licenses issued and 144 new home-based business licenses. The total number of licensed businesses in Murray City in 2017 was 3,951 which is an increase of 227 from 2016. The Information Technology Division provides support for every department in the city, plus the city council. This includes support for all types of devices and software, including but not limited to mobile phones, tablets, desktop computers, public safety record systems, server support, uh, and the Tyler Munis modules, I might add, and the recording equipment. <laughs> Uh, the Wi-Fi in Murray Park uh, was completed by the IT division in 2017. The IT division is a critical component of our day-to-day -day city operations. A very popular service provided by our city is that of passport processing. In 2017, the city recorder's office processed 4,363 new passport applications, up from 2,506 the previous year, which so nearly double, and 460 renewals up from 63 in 2016. So it's a very popular service. The building division issued uh, 2,010 building permits in 2017, which is an increase of 282 over 2016. I'm enthusiastic about the developments that are happening in Murray. The expansion of Fashion Place Mall with a number of new stores and restaurants continues to draw shoppers from around the region.
All cities, including Murray, are under increased pressure for the development of additional high-density housing. Our most recent master plan adopted last year identifies areas in our city, particularly near transportation, near public transportation hubs, that are appropriate for these types of housing developments. In addition to these high density developments, I am very excited to have several new low density single family housing developments underway in Murray, <coughs> ranging from 6,000 square foot minimum lots up to 10,000 square foot minimum lots. These will be wonderful new neighborhoods that will allow those in the market to purchase a new single family home in Murray. In addition, there will be approximately 40 additional pre-manufactured home sites added to the Winchester Estates, which provides affordable housing opportunity for those over the age of 55. In his State of the City address last year, Mayor Iyer stated, and I quote, the redevelopment of the Murray City Center District, including preparations for a new city hall, continues to be a top priority, end of quote. The redevelopment of the Murray City Center District is also a top priority of my administration. I'm happy to report that despite the many challenges that have been presented, we are on the verge of that development becoming a reality. Environmental issues that have been an obstacle are on the brink of resolution, along with the property acquisition challenges that have slowed our process, excuse me, slowed our progress. In the very near future, we will be inviting the public to attend an open house to review our progress and make comments. In May of 1978, that's 1978, 40 years ago, the Murray Eagle newspaper published an article titled, City Points to Downtown for Location of New City Center. In the article, Mayor Lorel Muir discussed the building of a new city hall in the downtown redevelopment area west of State Street. After 40 years, it's time to stop discussing and start the building. I believe that the construction of a new city hall in the redevelopment area will spawn new interest in private development on the remaining property, including the State Street frontage. Downtown Murray needs revitalization. The Desert Star Theater brings hundreds of people to the downtown area each week, and we need to complement that outstanding amenity with other downtown attractions. Construction, construction plans for a new headquarters fire station are currently being reviewed by the building department. We are ready to begin construction as soon as the environmental concerns are mitigated and the purchase of the property from Utah Transit Authority is finalized. We believe we are getting close. Relocating the fire department headquarters station to the corner of 4800 South and Box Elder will allow for the extension of Hanauer Street from 4800 South to Vine Street which has been in the planning phase for many years. The city has acquired the Murray Mansion, the Murray Baptist Chapel, which is also known as the Murray Wedding Chapel, and the Murray Theater. We're hopeful that future funding sources will become available to restore these structures. I recognize the emotional issue of historic preservation and support preservation efforts. However, I believe that we cannot sustain disinvestment in our downtown area. <laughs> Such a disinvestment <laughs> leads to blight. There may be fine lines between historic preservation, disinvestment, and private property rights, but all need due consideration as we proceed with redevelopment. The Murray Library has had a year of accolades and challenges. For the first time, the library, under the supervision of Library Director Kim Fong, has been designated as a nationally starred library by the Library Journal. This ranking is given to libraries based on their annual budget and key statistical measures. While that's important, our library is so much more than mere statistics. Their mission of being your friendly hometown library sets them apart. Last year, nearly 355,000 patrons visited the library. The library presented 921 in-library programs attended by 32,000 patrons. And this is impressive. <coughs> there were over one and a half million views of the library's YouTube channel for children called StoryTube. But the library is bursting at the seams and has no place to expand. 
largely due to the fact that it's located on school district property on Hillcrest Junior High Campus. The library board recently voted to set aside funds for a library bond payment to facilitate a new library building in the future to be located near the new city hall. Of course, the budget will be subject to approval by the city council. The Wasatch Front is, in, is currently enjoying a robust economy. The unemployment rate in Utah is hovering around 3.1%, a full 1% lower than the national rate. According to Utah Department of Workforce Services, 38,800 jobs were added to the state's economy since December of 2016. This trend has not only resulted in a labor shortage, but has also pushed wages up in some jobs. As a city, we are only as good as our employees, and it's imperative that our employees are compensated fairly within the market. The council approved funding in the current budget to conduct a citywide compensation study. The final results have been submitted by the consultant and will be discussed with the city council as part of the preparation for the upcoming budget cycle. One area of particular concern is in the police department. We have an outstanding police department led by Chief Craig Burnett. I'm extremely proud of our police department. However, our compensation for our officers is lagging behind other agencies around us. There's already a shortage of qualified candidates for police officers, and this issue is being amplified by the addition of 40 officers uh, in Salt Lake City hired last month. One news outlet reported that 17 of the officers hired were lateral transfers from other police agencies. They're looking for experienced officers. Murray City cannot afford to lose trained officers to other departments over compensation issues. It's important for the health of our police department to have a good mix of experienced officers to mentor and train our newer members. Good officers are in demand, and we need to respond to the market conditions to keep our officers. We're beginning to see a similar trend in the fire department as well. Just to be clear, I want to make sure that all of our employees are fairly compensated for the job they do. But I'm highlighting the situation in the police department tonight because I believe it's a critical issue that needs immediate attention. Our police have seen an increase in homeless and transient related calls throughout the year. This was due to a focused effort known as Operation Rio Grande which began in the downtown Salt Lake City area homeless shelters where most of the population was displaced. Consequently, moving those homeless into surrounding cities, our police department has begun, tra has begun tracking statistics and documenting homeless individuals, which they are continually encountering during calls for service. They have identified transient and homeless camps within the city and have noted a substantial increase. They continue to work to patrol and clean up these areas along with code enforcement personnel, special investigations, and community services. Also, our entire community has unfortunately seen an increase in petty crime over the past years, and Murray is no exception. I call upon the residents of Murray to do your part in discouraging these crimes in your neighborhoods by installing security lighting, watching out for your neighbors, reporting suspicious activities to the police, I believe we can cut down on the crimes if we'll be diligent in helping the police. We are fortunate to enjoy outstanding fire protection in Murray City under the direction of Chief Gil Rodriguez. Emergency calls to our fire department continue to increase with nearly 7,000 calls in 2017. Approximately 80% of these calls were for emergency medical response with approximately 44% requiring ambulance transport. Our firefighters and paramedics are some of the best trained anywhere. Our contract medical director, Dr. Adam Balls, is the chairman of the Intermountain Medical Center Emergency Department. Under his direction, our fire personnel receive ongoing medical training and nationally recognized certifications. This past December, when the state of California declared a state of emergency due to the raging wildfires, a request was sent out by Utah's governor to all Utah fire departments asking for resources to assist California. 
Murray City deployed four firefighters and a wildland engine to aid in the fighting of the Thomas Fire in Southern California. There were approximately 80 firefighters who responded from Utah. The Thomas Fire ended up being the largest fire in modern California history, growing to nearly 282,000 acres and destroying over 1,000 structures and damaging another 280. This fire also resulted in the loss of life of a California firefighter, Corey Iverson. <clears throat> Our Murray City Justice Court is led by Judge Paul Thompson and Court Administrator Mike Williams and is touted as being a model court. The court is now nearly completely paperless. Filings from citations to motions are done by e-filing. Everything the judge needs to read or sign is electronic. Their case disposition time is well within the target period set by the state, and our court is ahead of schedule with compliance to the Sixth Amendment Commission's recommendation for courts across the nation. In 2017, our Murray Justice Court disposed 10,519 cases. We're looking forward to the court relocating in the new City Hall building, as there have been numerous challenging maintenance issues with the court building. It's a little known fact that Murray City had its own professional baseball team in 1914, the Murray Infants, part of the Union Association League. The team folded after one season when the league collapsed. It also may be a little known fact that Murray City is currently home to a professional women's football team, the Utah Falcons. The two-time defending national champions of the International Women's Football League make their home field here in Murray at Cottonwood High School. This is real full contact football, tackle football. These women athletes are dedicated, amazing, and fun to watch. Uh, I invo invite you to join me in attending their home opener versus the Seattle Majestics on Saturday, April 14th at 3 p.m. at Cottonwood High School. As I mentioned at the beginning of this address, the state of the city of Murray is strong and sound, but not without challenges. The Utah Legislature is currently in session, and we are fortunate to have a very good working relationship with our legislators who represent Murray. But every year there's a push from some lawmakers to limit or take away local control from cities. As a city, we must fundamentally oppose such attempts at changes to state laws that weaken the ability of local government to make local decisions, particularly in zoning and land use issues. We must also oppose the continued attempts at redistribu redistribution of sales tax dollars. Also, there are good intention attempts to exempt an increasing number of properties from the tax rolls with their unintended consequences. One of our significant challenges is that a full third of the properties in Murray City are tax exempt, yet require services such as police protection, fire protection, road maintenance, and other city services. Our revenues are not keeping pace with the cost of providing services. These are issues that we'll be tackling together over the coming months and years. I'm proud of the fact that Murray is a transparent city, and I take my hat off to you as a city council. We conduct our business, our public business, in the public. Last June, the Salt Lake Tribune reported that Murray City closed only 4% of council meetings in 2016, the lowest in the county. The live streaming of council meetings initiated in October of 2015 has been a success in my opinion. And I intend to extend that access and transparency to planning and zoning commission meetings this year, subject to council approval of funding. I want to state this evening that I support a more walkable and rideable community. We will be adding bicycle lanes to 700 West from 5400 South to Winchester Street this coming year. We will be adding sidewalks and bike lanes on East Vine Street over the next two years. And we are nearing completion of the canal trail improvements from Fontaine Blue to Wheeler Farm. Also tonight, I announce my intent to bring the green bike program to Murray City, particularly around transit stops, Fashion Place Mall, and Intermountain Medical Center. Many of you have noticed areas around our city that are consistently cluttered with trash and debris, particularly along public streets. 
I plan to roll out a Murray City Adopt-A-Street program to enable organizations, businesses, and individuals to volunteer to help maintain and beautify the streets of our city. There are also certain gateways to our city that can be aesthetically improved. I want Murray to be a place we can all be proud to call home. In conclusion, I'm optimistic about the future of Murray City, and I hope you are too. I look forward to the many challenges and improvements over the coming years as we all work together. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We're going to open it up to citizen comments. Uh, if you want to speak, please come to the microphone. You have three minutes. Uh, pick up a form from Jan, and uh, we'll go from there. State your name, address, and you'll have three minutes. Hi, my name is Dr. Kathy Allen, and I'm so happy to be here to engage with th your citizens tonight. Uh, I am running for state council, I'm sorry, <laughs> state senate district eight, which is uh, a semi-open seat. Uh, it has been filled temporarily by uh, the GOP, who replaced Dr. Brian Shiozawa with Dr. Zender. It seems like it's kind of a doctor seat, because <laughs> I'm a doctor too. I'm a family physician. And I practiced medicine here in Utah for 30 years. Um, they say that all politics is local. And having heard uh, your mayor's speech and having talked to Shannon here, um, your city has a great deal of city pride. It occurs to me that you have foresight in your planning and your implementation of your policies. And if larger entities in government were managed as well as your city is, I think we would be a lot further along right now than we are. So I commend you. I know that you have a citizenship of about 55,000 people and that you've been a city since 1903. And that your city gets bigger during the day because you have a lot of workers that come in to the hospital and the businesses. I imagine that creates uh, traffic headaches and logistic problems. But it sounds to me like you're perfectly capable of taking care of those. My objective in running uh, for this office is similar to the ones, the objectives I had last year when I ran for Congress. I ran for this, the uh, Congressional District 3. Um, I thought I was going to run against Jason Chaffetz. And you know, that part was kind of fun because he would utter things and um, the most famous one of course being iPhones are like health care and you have to make these tough choices. And I tweeted that yes, you did have to make tough choices and I put up my fundraising page. And I raised a lot of money and it was a curious experience because the money came for me before I was really ready as a candidate. So last year was a real learning experience. But I was able to crystallize a lot of the things that are important to me. And of course, health care is one of them. Education is another. Environment is another. And I want, to, uh, I want to learn more about your city. And I want to, if elected, work with you and continue the good relationships that you've had to date. And I thank you for letting me introduce myself. And thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay, I'll close citizen comments. We'll move on to the consent agenda. 7.1, consider confirmation of the mayor's appointment of Todd Allen to the Eth Ethics Commission in an at-large position for three-year term to expire February 19, 2021. 7.2, consider confirmation of the mayor's appointment of Susan Gregory to the Ethics Commission in an at-large position for three-year term to expire February 19, 2021. 
7.3, consider confirmation of the mayor's reappointment of Connie Gardner to the Heritage Center Advisory Board in an at-large position for a three-year term to expire February 1st, 2021. 7.4, consider confirmation of the mayor's appointment of Chris Clark to the Heritage Center Advisory Board in an at-large position to fill the remainder of the term expiring February 1st, 2019. 7.5, consider confirmation of the mayor's appointment of Richard Clark to the Heritage Center Advisory Board in an at-large position for a three-year term to expire February 1st, 2021. And 7.6, consider confirmation of the mayor's reappointment of Jenny Martin to the Heritage Center, Heritage Center Advisory Board in an at-large position for a three-year term to expire February 1st, 2021. Uh, with that, I would ask the mayor if he has anything to say. Yes, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to recognize uh, these individuals. I, if, if any of them are here tonight, if you stand, I think I see Todd back there. Uh, we appreciate the, uh, as you can see, we've been very busy uh, interviewing uh, folks and uh, we really appreciate these are part of the volunteers that I was talking about earlier that that really make our community great thank you thank you mayor thank you Todd and thank you everybody else that volunteers for Murray with that if there's no objection I'll take a motion on the confirmation I'll move that we approve the consent agenda I'll second thank you Brent Aye. 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 Okay, we'll move into the public hearings. 8.1, public hearing number one. 8.1, continued from January 2nd. Consider an ordinance amending section 2.06.040 of the Murray City Council Municipal Code relating to compensation and city council members and that has been withdrawn so there'll be no uh, council consideration of this matter public hearing number two 8.21 staff and sponsor presentation of public comment prior to the city action on the following matter consider an ordinance vacating the public right-of-way commonly referred to as rifle street located at approximately 80 west from 47th south street to 48 south street murray city salt lake city state of utah tim tim tingy presenting nelson and sons inc hamlet development uh, inc are the applicants tim hi council it's good to be here tonight uh, up on the screen is the uh, proposed area that is uh, being requested to be vacated you can see it's just north of 4800 South, uh, close to the tracks line on uh, the old fish food factory is what a lot of people were referring uh, the site as where we're looking at the, the uh, vacation of the right-of-way. When a vacation of right-of-way occurs, um, we have to look at a variety of different things. If the property was purchased by the city way back, um, then it's a surplus scenario, which that is not the case here. It was dedicated as right-of-way. And so a vacation, if the council uh, approves, is to vacate the right-of-way and to allow it to go to adjacent property owners. This property is fairly unique in that all of the adjacent property owners, as you see in this picture, um, it's, it's one property owner. It's Nelson and Sons, and they own all of the parcels uh, surrounding this. So if the council considers this tonight and vacates it, it will go to that uh, property owner. There was a request uh, for development on this site that went to the Planning Commission. Um, Hamlet Development is proposing that. Uh, there is a request by the owners of the property for this to be vacated. The future uh, desire for development of the site is to include a mixed-use project with a commercial office and townhome residential development on the site. Um, if that occurs, and once again it's gone to the Planning Commission, um, the utilities that are located in this street, it's called <coughs> Rifle Street, will be placed in the new street that's being proposed. Utilities have been contacted related to that and have given consent for that to occur if vacation happens. So based on that, a uh, few other things to, to think about related to the interest of the city, 
Um, we feel like there is good cause to vacate this for future development opportunities. Um, we do have written consent of the adjacent property owners, as I have, have has been mentioned, and this is an important part of uh, vacation of right of way. We have provided notice uh, for this vacation. Um, as part of that, it's it's been noticed on the property with signage as well as uh, to adjacent property owners. And as I've mentioned, we've already contacted and met with uh, utilities related to that. So based on that, based on the ordinance that you have in front of you, uh, staff is recommending approval of this proposed vacation of right-of-way, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Is there an applicant that wants to speak? Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be in front of this uh, council. Uh, Michael Brodsky at 308 East, 4500 South Hamlet Development. Um, we are well along with our application for this mixed-use uh, development. Uh, Mayor, listening to your comments about the planned improvements for this immediate area, uh, I am incredibly pleased and excited to be a part of it. I believe that the office building that we are proposing to build at 48, uh, 4800 South and approximately 100 West will complement um, the city's plans for this immediate area. Um, we are awaiting a development agreement uh, that will come back to the city council for your review and approval that will describe uh, the mixed use that we're proposing there of townhouses and um, uh, the office building. Uh, at this point, we're expecting to be able to be underway uh, towards the end of next month, uh, early April, with the development work and uh, application for building permits uh, on the office building. Um, are there any questions for me of the council? No, thank you. I don't see any. Thank you. And thank you. We'll open it up for public hearing. Is there anyone that, in, from the public that wishes to speak on this? Not seeing any, we'll close public hearing and move to council consideration of the, the above matter. Do you want a motion? Okay. I'll make a motion to adopt the ordinance vacating public right-of-way commonly referred to as Rifle Street, located at approximately 80 West from 4700 South Street to 4800 South Street, Murray City, Salt Lake County, State of Utah. I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Brent? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll close that public hearing. We'll move on to public hearing 8.3. Consider an ordinance related to the land use, amends the zoning map, and the property located at approximately 1222 West Bullion Street, Murray City, <coughs> Utah, from A1 Agriculture. Zoning District to R110 Low Density Single Family Residential Zoning District. Tim Tingey presenting. MPG Enterprises, Greg and Colleen Costello applicants. Council, this item was also considered in a public hearing uh, before the Planning Commission on January 4th. They provided a recommendation, which I'll speak to in just a minute. This is the property that we are talking about. It's property that uh, is located just north of Bullion Street, just to the west of the Jordan River Parkway. I mean, his area also along, I believe, Walden Glen uh, as well. Uh, the original uh, discussion related to this included a, a parcel. Uh, the, the parcel uh, wrapped around the existing buildings to the north. And as part of that, there was a lot line adjust adjustment that was discussed at the Planning Commission meeting. All of that uh, was considered, and this site right here, this was part of the notice 
as well as that full parcel um, that was sent out to adjacent property owners and within a 300 foot radius. This is the area that is being proposed uh, for the rezone. And I want to reiterate a couple of things related to the rezone tonight. We're not considering any development plans. We're considering what the future uses will be on the site. So specific questions about uh, the number of lots, number of uh, uh, proposed road uh, configuration, all of that is not under consideration tonight. We are simply considering a change in the land use. Clear back in 2003, the general plan talked about A1 or agricultural land eventually moving more towards uh, low density residential. That's been something that has been in place for a number of years, like I said, clear back to 2003. This is a proposal to go from A1 agricultural to uh, residential R110. R110 means 10,000 square foot lots. And re regarding single family uh, homes, that uh, is as low density as you can get with single family. You can go to 8,000 square foot lots and 6,000 square foot lots, which is still low density. Tonight, this proposal is for 10,000 square foot lots. So based on that, uh, the Planning Commission uh, deliberated on it, held the public hearing. Um, staff had recommendations of approval. It meets the general plan, and the general plan is something the council just adopted, where we studied this, looked at this area, looked at the areas of agricultural all throughout the city, and based on that, uh, the move to low-density single-family is something the general plan supports. The types of land uses that are allowed in single-family low-density 10,000 square foot lots, as I mentioned, 10,000 square foot lots for single-family homes. You could potentially have other um, uh, minor uses. Um, in, in residential, we allow for schools. Um, there's not a proposal or size for that here uh, on this property, but there's, those are the types of uses uh, conducive to single-family low density. So based on that, uh, the Planning Commission uh, recommended approval un unanimously. Staff is recommending approval tonight from A1 to R110 on this site. Happy to answer questions. You have a question, Dave? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> After further thought. <laughs> it's always good to think first. <laughs> Is there an applicant that wishes to speak? Okay, we'll open up to public uh, comment. If there's anyone in the audience that wishes to speak, uh, please get a form and the microphone's yours. Talk first. Sure. Shauna Bullock. I'm at 1223 Bullion Street, so I'm right in the area of where this has taken place and I'm excited for residential development. I'm concerned about a couple of things. <coughs> A couple of years ago, we took away the school bus system to bus our kids from Bullion Street and that old farm subdivision to Viewmont. That's, gonna, that's created a considerable amount of traffic in our area for the mothers to get their kids to school. So I'm concerned about that part. And then I'm also concerned about the traffic with the development to the southeast of us of 80 homes on s smaller lots. I'm glad to see these are 10,000 square feet and then the additional lots over here. It's difficult at times now to get out of my driveway on Bullion Street, so I'm just wanting to see what our plan is for the roads and for our kids' school. Thank you. Anyone else? With that, I'll close public comment, move to the council for consideration. I'll accept a motion. I'll make a motion we adopt the ordinance relating to land use that amends zoning map for the property located at approximately 1222 West Bullion Street, Murray City, Utah, from A1 Agricultural Zoning to R110, Low Density Single Family Residential Zoning. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, Brent. Did you have a question? I, I did, just real quick. With regards to her question, which I'm fine going and voting, but we'll, you'll get that with her after. Answer that. What's that now? Thank yeah. you. I'd appreciate then that. Then why don't you address that? 
So I know, uh, obviously, the school district is a separate entity from us. Um, but I do know that the superintendent has, has had questions of my office about the developments and the impacts on schools. Um, I, I can't speak for them as far as what they would be considering related to busing, but they have um, asked about these developments and are planning and trying to understand um, the implications for the school district. So based on that, I know they're very much aware of it, and I think it's something that uh, maybe the, the people that have talked here tonight will have the opportunity to talk to the school district directly, and they can answer those questions. Related to the second issue, uh, traffic and development, once again, this is a rezone. This is about uh, the future uses on that site. We don't have a proposal yet on the number of lots. Um, just the basic size of 5.8 acres. There's not a lot of uh, homes that could fit on that with public streets in place. Um, so based on that, when we do look at a subdivision uh, review for a proposal that comes on this site, um, that will be a consideration that we will look at at the time. There will be notices sent out to property owners uh, for the Planning Commission, and they can come and, and there can be specific conversations about that at that time. Okay. Thank you. Aye. 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 Okay, under new, there's no unfinished business. Under new business, consider an ordinance amend, amending section 112.24.015 of the Murray City Municipal Code related to city parks. Kim Sorensen presenting. Thank you, Council. As you know, we are nearing completion of the Murray Canal Trail, which goes from the east side of Fontaine Blue down west to Willer Farm. Um, with anticipation of that park being open, this is a request to add the Canal Trail as a park to the Murray City Code. Now, what this will mean is that the new Canal Trail will fall under the regulations and rules that our current parks fall under. And for the council's information based on, on, in part, with communication from those who are using the trail and those who are, live by the trail, some of the key components of that, we believe, are the trail will be opened from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., like all our parks are now. Uh, dogs will be required to be on leash. Uh, dog owners will be required to clean up with the, after their dogs. Motorized vehicles will not be allowed, and horses will not be allowed on the trail. Any questions? Uh, yes, I have a question. I'm wondering, will, when will the signage be up that will indicate that? We expect the trail to be completed mid to end of March. As soon as it's completed, we'll have signage ready to go up, and that will include the, uh, the rules of the, for the trail. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, a uh, motion. I'm looking for a motion to accept this. Aren't there any, is there an opportunity for no. Nope. Not on this. I'll, I'll make, make a, the motion. Ready for a motion. Go ahead, Diane. I'll make the motion to adopt the ordinance amending section 12.24.015 of the Murray City Municipal Code relating to parks. City Parks. I'll second that. Brent? Aye. 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 All right, now we move to the mayor's report. You've heard enough from me tonight. Uh, if you have any questions, <laughs> I'll be happy to answer. I'd like to make a statement. You, it, you did a wonderful job, and as a friend of yours, and I'm just excited for the work that you have done and look forward to what you're going to do. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. I also want to say you hit it out of the park. That's correct, right? I mean, that's one of, okay. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> yeah, was, one of those sports analogies. Charles was back there nodding his head. It, yes. it, it, it hasn't been since 1914 that we had a, a professional baseball team but we have a lot of good baseball over here so <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take that thanks anyway thank you I look forward to our upcoming year I think it's gonna be great 
Any other questions from the council? Okay, the meeting is adjourned. All right.